I'm Edie Lush and I'm here in the Hub Culture Pavilion in Davos. Very pleased to be joined by Laura Liswood, Secretary General of the Council of World Women Leaders. Yeah. So, how are we doing on the women world leadership front? How are we doing? <laughs> uh, yeah, I think we need to do what I call hurry history. <laughs> what does that mean? I think that we're moving a little slower than, okay. than we thought. You know, I think a lot of us thought, you know, that over time the pipeline would fill and mm -hmm. all would be well and every, everything would naturally happen. It doesn't appear to be anything natural about it. Mm -hmm. You know, that, uh, things seem to be stalling out, seem to be plateauing. Um, Falling in Davos, 17% to 15%. Yeah, a mirror of what's happening right. out in the world. You know, it's just a reflection of that level of leadership. And so, you know, the question is why? The question is what can we do about mm -hmm. it? I mean, we, we seem to be going at it in all different ways. Um, you know, I think we need some new tools on the horizon. I mm -hmm. think we need to look at some new ways of thinking about this. Mm -hmm. So, I don't know what the current terminology is, but when I was in going for university, the idea was this idea of quotas mm -hmm. and yeah. affirmative yeah. action. Yeah, sure. And, and is there anything new under the sun? Is there anything, is there any <laughs> new idea that we can try? You know, I don't know if that is new, although I think what's interesting is that some of these affirmative mechanisms, mm -hmm. if you will, are actually being put into place. Mm -hmm. And so then the question becomes, okay, what happens? You know, mm -hmm. does the sky fall? Right. You know, do, do we have all these terrible board members, you know, mm -hmm. that are totally unqualified? You know, of course, nobody actually asks that question about the men who are on the boards, but right. you know, right. it does seem to be an issue. But, you know, I think we're going to see a lot more experience about mm -hmm. what's happening when we do have some sort of affirmative mechanisms in mm -hmm. place. And I think a lot of country, a lot of cultures, a lot of people are saying, well, wait a minute, you know, we've been doing a lot of things here, and it, you know, it feels like we're not pushing the dial. Fascinating for me is this plateauing mm -hmm. of the 15%, the 18%, the 20% mm -hmm. kind of thing. And I'm beginning to worry that people think that that's equality. Right, <laughs> right. So I, the other kind of side of it is this idea of kind of leaning in mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and the fact that it's actually sometimes quite difficult um, as for the person in, the, um, in a partnership yeah. who wants to take a leading role in a company, mm -hmm. but it can be quite difficult back home. Sure. So isn't there something that needs to be done as well around changing companies to make them more friendly places to work? for whatever reason that people yeah. might not want to work all hours of the day. No, I think that, again, that's another one of those things that we need to f investigate. You know, we need to say, is that, an, is that going to be a gatekeeper? Mm -hmm. And it appears to be. You know, I travel too much, so I call them headwinds and tailwinds. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know? And some of the ways that we work, operate in the world, I think are headwinds. They mm -hmm. slow us down. And you know, I think the challenge, of course, is that, as we know, in no culture, in no society, do women and men uh, share the housework mm -hmm. and the child work equally, mm -hmm. right? So which means, of course, that women are subsidizing men's ability to get ahead because they're freeing up men's time right. to do these things, which is an interesting element to it. And you know, it's not just the lean-in individual. Yeah. I call it the seed in the soil. Mm -hmm. The seed is the individual. Right? All right, you have to do certain things, but the soil is the institution right. and the policies that go around that. So childcare policies aren't just an individual choice. Mm -hmm. They're about what a, what a country does in its tax policies or maternity policies mm -hmm. or whatever. What, is it, what does a company do? You know, do they have family friendly mm -hmm. work hours, work environments, work, how, how does one work at home, mm -hmm. that kind of thing. So I mean, all of the, it, the, I think the challenge is we all thought there was some magic bullet to this thing. I don't think there is a magic bullet. I think there's a number of things that have to be put into play. You know, again, uh, I think that for me, there seems to be a direct correlation between getting older and looking for things that are more like affirmative mechanisms to right. see if they might work. Right. Last question for you. If you had to predict what number, what percentage of women were going to be in the official delegation to Davos next year, what do you think? Oh, my. That's, a, that's an interesting <laughs> pr prediction question. Uh, you know, I think, unfortunately, it'll still be probably somewhere between 15 and 20 percent. I mean, right. the forum is, has done quite a bit yeah. around this effort. They really have raised it into a, to, to a level mm. of, of interest and awareness. And the bottom line is, what company, what country wouldn't fully utilize all of the human resources right. it has? Laura, thank you so much for stopping back into the Hub Culture Pavilion, and I'm Edie Lush. <laughs>